have been in the last two years developing a project here at the uh, OCP Policy Center, which, among other uh, tools, we are developing the regional input output table for Morocco. This is a very uh, important and relevant planning tool because it gives you details about the sectoral and regional interdependence uh, in the country. So we are able to uh, follow uh, all the transactions involving different sectors and different uh, regions in a country, in our, in our case, in Morocco. Well, uh, first the advantages, since you have this picture, this detailed picture of an economy, we are able to use it for uh, impact analysis in a way that being an accounting-based model gives us an uh, idea about multiplier effects of shocks in the final demand, for instance, in changes in household consumption, in government demand, in exports or investments of different sectors. We can assess the multiplier effects that, go no, that occurs not only to uh, output, but value added, employment, CO2 emissions, water com consumption, you name it, whatever variable that we can relate to sectoral output. But there are many limitations when you use this model because, as I mentioned, it's an accounting-based model. So, uh, multipliers that we get, the impacts that we get are restricted to that, to, to a given technology that we observe for a specific year. So, when you go to more sophisticated impact analysis, you want to get rid of some of the limitations that input-output model, models have, such as uh, the absence of any relative price implication, the absence of any supply side restriction. So being a demand-led model, we tend to uh, uh, exaggerate the impacts that in our simulations using uh, such framework. They, they uh, are very useful, especially first because they are based in the structure of uh, input-output matrix, which brings all the details that you have in the input-output model to these multi-sectoral, multi-regional models, uh, in the case the inter-regional CG models that we work with. Uh, most of the restric restrictions and limitations that we have in the input-output model, we get rid of them by introducing um, a more theoretical-based uh, uh, relations that allows us, allows us to, for instance, put some, some relevance to rel change in relative prices in supply constraints and things like that. But these models, also, they are not with without limitations and we have to take much, a lot of care when using them. So that's important for us to, to give proper training, stud, study the, 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 the equations of the model, how we build the model so that we can know how far we can go by making analysis with this tool. We, we have a long experience with uh, regional, not only regional input-output models, but also uh, regional or inter-regional CG models uh, applied to Brazil, mainly through the uh, University of Sao Paulo Regional and Urban Economics Lab called NEREOS, 
and through the FIPI, which is the research foundation that supports activities in the Department of, of Economics. We've been, we have uh, specified and implemented such models for in different uh, areas of the countries. For different countries, we've done work in since countries like Lebanon, Egypt, uh, Portugal, Austria. We are doing work here in Morocco. We did work in different countries uh, in South America. But what's more more interesting is that these model are very this model this, this uh, models are very helpful in uh, helping policymakers in uh, having more um, let's say uh, uh, educated information for their decisions. Not they are that they are they are going to substitute. Uh, um, uh, Policy, policy decision process, but there's going, they're going to be, they're going to provide additional insights for evaluating product, pro, uh, policy, different policies. Uh, one point is that they can be used in different areas. We have experience with this model in transportation projects, uh, in sectoral policies, in climate change. Uh, in different aspects of government expansion. So there is a r big range of uh, areas in applied economics that we can bring insightful information by running simulation with uh, this suit of models. Well, uh, when you go to the interregional or the spatial uh, dimension, where you have regions in a, diff in, in a country, different regions in a country interacting through trade flows, right? You can use these models to integrate with uh, transport models, where you find the a detailed uh, description of the transportation network. Uh, in a country. So when you integrate these two models, it's possible for you to make changes in the uh, transportation network that will affect the trans transaction costs in space by changing the way uh, uh, transportation costs, that by changing, the, 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 let's say, the a matrix of interregional transportation costs and by changing the transportation costs through a physical intervention, what you have is that you're going to change the way agents perceive how costly goods from different regions are. And from that information, you can assess various impacts of transportation policies, like not only, as you mentioned, in terms of value-added employment, but other dimensions that the mo this kind of models uh, allow you to. I think without such tools, you would be some steps behind a proper process of understanding regional development because you need information about regions, you need information about the structure of regions, you need information about how a region uh, integrates to other regions in the economy and you have so that when you look at policies, even local policies, they will have uh, repercuss repercussions in other regions and in the same way national policies will have different aspects in different effects in regions of the country. So uh, the most, most important point of having this set of tools available is that you'll be able to look more closely at uh, regional structures and how regions are uh, integrated with other regions of the country to have a better assessment of policies 
uh, in this context. Uh, not only, I think that I'm, I'm quite sure that the information system available in the country is uh, enough for us to have this model properly implemented for the country, at least at a fair, fairly disaggregated level of sectors, let's say 20 sectors, and for the uh, 12 regions that you have in, in Morocco in this new re regionalization framework that you are adopting now.